And then it should be an experience filled with joy. But for many women, childbirth can be extremely traumatic and leave long-lasting emotional scars, including PTSD. Yes, yeah, studies have found as many as one in three women were found, uh, found that parts of their childbirth experience were traumatic. Meanwhile, 42% of black women reported feeling that the care that they received during childbirth was either poor or very poor, with black women almost four times more likely to die in pregnancy and childbirth compared to white women. This is in the UK. Mm. Uh, Conservative MP Theo Clark is launching an inquiry to improve maternal health care in the UK. She revealed in the Commons her own childbirth ordeal that nearly killed her. Uh, right, well, Theo is here alongside Tanuke, right, who's also experienced birth trauma and um, has been campaigning for quite a long time, actually, haven't you, uh, about better maternity care for black women in particular. But good morning to both of you. Um, Theo, um, obviously, that moment captured... Um, a lot of emotion for lots of people watching. Um, you obviously had planned to make this speech. Did it take you by surprise that you, your emotions at the time got the better of you in a way, in, for the, in, in, a, in a quite a powerful way, actually? So I was totally not expecting to burst into tears yeah. in the House of Parliament giving my speech. I spent a lot of time thinking about what stories I wanted to share of mothers. I think what really did it was I actually had several mums watching my speech live in the gallery and I could feel that sort of weight of expectation of all the things they wanted me to get across. Um, and, and it really was a, a really emotional moment. It's incredibly powerful as well, you know, listening to you talk about what you went through. There'll be people watching this morning that haven't heard that story, though, so can you just share your experience? Uh, because it is just an extraordinary thing to hear. So I was um, giving birth to my daughter 18 months ago and suffered a very long labour of nearly 40 hours. Um, and I was expecting to have that wonderful moment when my daughter arrived and she'd magically start crawling up my chest and start breastfeeding. And instead what happened is I started bleeding very heavily post-delivery and I got rushed into the emergency theatre and I ended up being awake in surgery for nearly two hours um, because I'd had an epidural. They wouldn't give me a general anaesthetic. And I'll be honest, it was the most terrifying experience of my life. Um, I really thought I was going to die mm. there on the operating table. And also I'd just been separated from my daughter after this huge labour, so it was very distressing. Um, and afterwards, when I came out, I remember being put in a side room with my daughter and I was paralysed from the waist down. I had a catheter, I had a drip in my arm mm. and my daughter was screaming and I pressed the emergency button for help. And this lady came in and said, not my baby, mm. not my problem. And mm. she literally walked out and left me there. And she was a nurse. She was one of the, the yeah. nurses on the ward. Absolutely, in, in the hospital. Wow. And it was really that experience that completely opened my eyes to the aftercare for mums in this country. Yeah. And the fact it's just not good enough and we need to do something about it. And um, Tanuke, in a way, you know, Theo's just echoing something that you've known for a long time. Mm. Absolutely. Tell, yeah. So um, I also had a traumatic experience giving birth to my son over six years ago, which led me to start um, co-found, actually, the Five Times More campaign. Five Times More, referring to the fact that you, black women have, were then actually five yeah. times more likely to die in pregnancy. Historically. Uh, yes. In childbirth, in, sorry, not yes. in pregnancy. In, yeah. in pregnancy, childbirth and the six-week period after. I think people always miss that right. six-week period after the postpartum period. It's actually really important to note because that's when most of the deaths actually happen. It's not just within childbirth, it's after. Like you were saying, to, to your point of the aftercare of mothers is so important. So, Thea, what, with this inquiry, what are you hoping to see? What are you hoping to sort of... Examples of things that you don't want to see happen anymore and what changes can practically be made to make sure that any mother's experience post giving birth is, is going to be a positive one? Mm. So first, I've just launched this national inquiry last week. I think the first thing to say is there's never actually been one in the history of the British Parliament. This is the first. And I'm really hoping this inquiry will start to look at some of the reasons behind the challenges in maternity aftercare. And uh, one of the things I'm asking is for members of the public to write to us and share their experiences. And I think it's really important to have that first-hand testimony from mothers. So I want to hear from them whether they gave birth 20 years ago or two months ago, if they've had a traumatic birth whether it's the physical injury side of birth, like my own, mm -hmm. and I suffered a, a third degree tear, mm -hmm. or whether it's the psychological side where they've needed support for things like PTSD, I would like to hear from them so we get that evidence for the inquiry. And Tanika, what is it that you found? Because obviously, in a way, you've been doing a sort of unofficial inquiry, a sort of people's inquiry for, for many, many years. 
a long racial division, actually, in terms of why is it that black women... And I actually I didn't realise that Asian women, too, are more likely to die than white women uh, in this country. I, I didn't realise that until I saw the statistics um, yesterday. Um, what is it that you have found, um, as, as Theo's there trying to now find out herself, is it psychological, is it physical? What is it that seems to be the, the concurrent theme? I think a concurrent theme is that women actually don't feel like they're listened to. And that's across the board. You know, um, just to take it back to my experience, I, I had late diagnosed preeclampsia and I was induced. And I kept saying, I feel like I'm in pain. I feel like I'm in pain. And I didn't know it was labor at the time, but I was sort of shut down and no one believed me. And I was left to just labor with no pain relief and nothing, you know, to sort of help me with that experience. And, and before you know it, it's time to push. I couldn't push it. It's just, really awful and I feel like the experience I had would have just not happened if someone had listened to me in the first place and checked me over and that aftercare. So I think, to your question, you know, it is physical. A lot of people experience things like sepsis and infections and things that are, you know, avoidable. Mm -hmm. um, but also that psychological damage of feeling like you're not important and like mm. you're, you know, we, we tell women in our campaign to trust their bodies and trust their gut, but if someone's gaslighting you almost and saying, you're not in pain, you can, you know, it, it, making you feel like you're just not important, that can also have such a huge effect on you. And Theo, there is something, isn't there, that, um, you know, there are myths and, and ideas about women's pain threshold that, mm. you know, just sort of suck it up because this is just part of being a woman and so on. And, and I think particularly for black women, there is this terrible um, idea that you're just over complaining, you know, or that you are just seek attention seeking. There's this horrible sort of undercurrent, isn't there? Mm. Uh, and it's not just obviously for women across the board. And I know, I know lots of female journalists have talked about it, but about the fact that pain is just assumed as part of being a woman. Well, I think that's absolutely right. Well, first, there seems to be a real taboo about talking about this stuff, yeah. which is why I'm doing this public campaign to say we should be having a national conversation. But also, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I've started reading through the submissions mm -hmm. to the inquiry, and I've had hundreds in already. Right. And I think one of the big themes is this lack of being listened to by mums. Um, I'll give you one example. Jill uh, was a police officer, and she suffered a fourth-degree tear. And can you imagine it was actually missed by the hospital? And she ended up having to uh, basically go back into a &E with her newborn baby because she'd been discharged with it. Um, and I was really shocked. She's had a life-changing birth injury, which will affect her forever. She ended up losing her job. And she wrote to me to say, I was just not listened to. I mean, she had things like fecal incontinence and it mm. wasn't even written in her handover mm. notes between shifts. Like, how is that acceptable? And we've got to stop that. It sounds like it's, it's, it's not before time, uh, you know, the inquiry, and let's hope that these, these, the, whatever we get from it and you get from it mm. is going to make a big difference. Yeah. Because clearly something needs to be done. But thank you both for joining us, Nikki and Theo. Yeah, it's really powerful, actually, what you're both doing. Yeah, thank you so much. Is there anywhere in particular that people can send in their, uh, their experiences, Theo? You know? Absolutely. So if they go to my website, which is just www.theo-clark.org.uk, there's a whole page about the birth from inquiry, guidelines for submissions, Brilliant. and we want to hear from you whether you're a mother or a partner and a dad or a healthcare professional. And your campaign is five um, times? Five times more. So it's www.5xmore.org. And if people need support, we have loads of resources on our website yeah, there. brilliant. Thank you for starting a really Thank important you. conversation from your own terrible experiences. Uh, if you. you've been affected by any of the issues <clears> we've been <throat> discussing, you can find advice and support on our website, tv.com uh, forward slash helpline.